Okay, welcome to week four, live lecture two. Let's get started here. It's about 7.30 Mountain Time, 9.30 Eastern Time. We are finalizing our, we're actually, this is our final um, lecture. So kind of exciting and you guys are finishing up your revisions and working on your assignment four. Hopefully you're um, pretty much finished writing your initial um, discussion posts because the initial posts are due by midnight tonight. So um, make sure you're getting those in. And then also don't forget the uh, career integration quiz that is also due. So let me just share the canvas here. We can take a look. So week four, don't forget discussion is due initial post um, before midnight tonight. Your assignment um, is what we kind of talked about yesterday. If you missed the lecture, listen to the recording. We went through uh, a demo on in an overview for the assignment for. If you have any questions, let me know. I also showed student examples and I have a few that I just found recently that I'm going to show you as well that I, I just uh, found in a folder. And then um, your assessment for is a quiz and today we're kind of do a little review of, of stuff that might be on that. Uh, Welcome, Thomas. When everybody comes in here, my little buzzer rings in and it scared me. Uh, so we're going to be reviewing the assessment here. Um, just kind of things to, to study and go over before you attempt the quiz if you have not taken it yet. And that's just basically going to be on your readings um, that you have in the course media section. Okay, and then don't forget career integration quiz here. Let me zoom in. Um, that we kind of went over yesterday as well. I just want you guys to remember to do that as well. All right, coming down to the last bit of this course. Again, just deadlines to remember. Uh, everything is due by midnight on Saturday. You guys are quickly approaching the last mod of the year, which is kind of split in half. We talked about that. Uh, I think it was last week. Um, hopefully you guys got a schedule about that as well, maybe an email. Um, kind of a weird situation. It, it pretty much, I've been teaching for independence for six years now, and it's pretty much have, it's the same thing every year as far as how they split it up. Um, it's typically during the second week of the mod that's split into two. So it's kind of, it could be kind of good for some of us, you know, it gives you a break, gets you caught up on stuff, but sometimes it's hard because you have to come back and you have to remember what, what it is that you were doing the last time that you took that long break. But, um, you know, needless to say, it's the holidays, so you just have to work around it and, you know, just kind of go with the flow. All right, the last time that we met up was last night. We went over some student examples from um, assignment three. We also looked at some resume writing tips um, and then also went over your final project overview. So if you missed any of that, definitely check that out. Um, we're gonna go over a few things today. Resume critiques, I'm just gonna show you some resumes that were submitted the last time I taught this class. I showed you a few um, packaged or I said brand identities that we did three years ago. So I'm just going to show you some examples of resumes just because I think it's good to see what other people are doing. You guys don't necessarily have to have your resume for this project, but you can, you can see what other students have done. Business plan overview. We'll just do a continuation of that. Um, and some of the stuff that we went over yesterday and today, uh, maybe on the quiz as well, just, uh, I'll kind of point out a few things so you guys can make sure you're aware of that. You know, obviously I can't tell you what's on the quiz, but I can kind of say, hey, you know, make sure you're reading up on this. All right, so let's take a look at some student resumes that were submitted the time that I taught this class many years ago um, and that, that I thought were, you know, at a good level to show you guys. Um, you know, so that you can kind of look at what's out there, what you're, you know, this is pretty much your competitors um, as well as your colleagues. So you want to make sure that your, your, your work is at the level, if not, you know, even better than their work. So you kind of have to make sure you're, you're uh, 
kind of looking at other people's uh, resumes for all of that um, comparison um, knowledge so that you can kind of either update yours accordingly and align it in a way that's going to be to this level. Okay, so this is very simple, yet it works very well. You know, just using a very neutral typeface, um, playing around with hierarchy, you know, alignment is set off really nicely here where it's all kind of easily, um, easy to follow, um, very clear as to what your each section is, and um, just very graphic, graphically done, contrasted very nicely, um, very simplistic, very, very uh, minimalist, yet it works. Here's another one. So I would say probably this one would work for more of an in-house and maybe an agency. Remember we were talking about that yesterday because this kind of has a more corporate yet, you know, well, it's a little bit of a creative side to it. This one maybe for more of an agency. It has more of a creative feel to it. Um, so a nice little illustration done by this, this student here. Um, and you can see the hierarchy with that illustration and her name and the contact information on the top. And it's a nice little diagonal split here done very nicely so that it kind of brings a little life to the resume where it's, you know, more motion to it, a little bit more creativeness and um, kind of pulls your eye downward as you go very, it's just easy to follow. And notice how she posts her education, employment, awards, and then the abilities down below, which is kind of nice, has those little... Um, bulleted dots. I think there's stars that are in these dots that kind of show the level of, of um, experience in each of those software programs. Kind of a neat way to show it. Here's another simplistic one just in a different grid structure here and using some type, you know, a little tree icon as well with little ticker marks that are orange that are set off in that orange color. You know, a nice gridded out uh, resume. This is great for any designer, even a web, if you're a web designer as well. And this person in particular is promoting themselves as a web designer too. So um, just very nicely done. Very, very simplistic, yet it works. All right. So, you know, now that you see those resumes, you know, obviously you want to go out and look at other resumes that are out there as well um, and compare yours with that to make sure that yours is up to par. And, um, you know, you want to align yours to the ones that work, that are successful, because, you know, that's kind of your competitors out there. You want to make sure it's, it's at that level. All right. Um, we kind of are continuing on from yesterday, talking about your business plan. Um, and we kind of talked about, uh, you know, each section individually. So we're just going to do a little review here. So the executive summary, and I posted also the um, template that you guys may use in announcements too yesterday. I did point that out yesterday as well. Um, that isn't as involved as what we're going to be talking about today, but some of this stuff in here is also in your quiz. So just kind of a heads up. So your business plan includes, and we talked about this yesterday, your executive summary, marketing, operations, financials, and appendix usually. That's typically the business plan um, sections. In your business plan, we talked about yesterday, executive summary and marketing, so we're just gonna go to operations for this uh, review. Operations, uh, what you need to describe in, within this section is business's general day-to-day -day operations. You know what goes on the description of your business's location you know or your franchise maybe you're just a single location um, uh, so you know provide those that description there describe equipment needed um, so you know if you are an agency you might need the equipment the software technology you know the the hardware um, stuff like that to uh, to be able to support your business. And the operations is the, um, the general location and equipment, just like we said, stated. So general, do an outline of your business day-to-day -day operations, like I was just saying, such as the hours of operation and the days the businesses will be open. If the business is seasonal, be sure to say so. Location, what type of premises are they and what is the size and location? And then equipment, the same goes for equipment besides describing the equipment necessary. 
So um, we looked at some examples yesterday very quickly, but this is what I pulled for the operations for this particular student that had their breakdown in each uh, section here, um, just in their own words. So you can kind of take a look here and see how they did this. Management structure says BB design is owned and operated by a single employee. If any help is needed, it will be contracted out as needed. BB design would use steamroller copy or any other print uh, company in the area for special print jobs. Personal and hiring process, all hiring will be done by Billy Beard. Contracted graphic design artists will be decided because of talent, experience, and style. Uh, faculty, uh, facility information, BB Design is located and ran from the home of Billy Beard in LA, Utah, LA Verkin. Um, if a new facility were ever to be required, additional research would need to be acquired to find out where the best office location would be. And then equipment needs, uh, BB Design will not need any technical equipment for startup, maybe some stock and art supplies, and then down the road, a better printer. All right. And then we go from operations to financials. And this is included in, in the financials. You, you can include the startup costs, projected operation expenses, and monthly operating budget. So startup costs, so to, to determine how much uh, seed money you need to start, you must estimate the cost of doing business for the first months. Some of these expenses will be one-time costs, such as fee or incorporating your business or the price of a sign for your building. And some will be out ongoing costs, such as the cost of utilities, inventory, insurance, et cetera. So here's an example, again, from the same example of the student kind of breaking it up into each section. So source an amount of initial equity. So it says initial funding that, requ that requir is required is about $500 and will come from personal savings. Since it will just be a part-time company ran from the home of Billy Beard, it will not be the primary source of income. Startup costs, since not prim no primary source of income, there, since there is not a primary source of income, there will be no need to worry about two months salary to start up. So costs stay low. Cost of start is about $500. And that says see Appendix 5.1. So you can actually go to that chart, which we'll be looking at in a second here. Um, and then it has the projected operating expenses. The projected annual company expenses is about $8,100. Also points to the appendix. The monthly operating budget is uh, around, are about six seventy-five. And then the projected monthly cash flow and break even point, projected monthly cash flow is $900 and break even point is about third or fourth month. Account management, all account management will be handled by Billy Beard, primarily because this is a sole proprietor. Now, a lot of this stuff was uh, that I'm going to show you in forward, the appendix uh, information was stuff that we did in this class to, you know, as a project. So you guys don't have to do that, um, but that's kind of why this was all in here. So here's the uh, appendix startup costs for 5-1 that was referred to on the startup cost section. So here they're kind of breaking it down. Starting inventory, $100. License and permits, $200. Advertising. So that's how that was kind of titled up, totaled up. Here's another one from another student's uh, student uh, startup cost examples. And this one they're kind of showing you with two months salary, the expenses, insurance of two months, what that would equal out. And then office supplies. And they're showing you the salary. So they're showing you not only expenses. That's a little confusing there. Um, they're showing you uh, the income and expenses. Income's on the top. And then everything else is expenses. So it's taken out of that. Financials um, are also, we're talking about operation expenses. So an uh, expense incurred in carrying out an Organizations directly associated with production. Uh, operation expenses are a part of that. Operating expenses include such things as payroll, sales, commissions, rent, repairs, and taxes. And um, so this is the projected quarterly operating expenses for one, first quarter, second quarter, third, and fourth. 
And this, again, was something that you didn't have to do in this class, but we did uh, three years ago when we were doing a project that had this all kind of outlined. So you can see um, they're showing you quarterly and then also monthly within each one of those. So they're showing you month one, two, three for the first um, cell there. And then if you follow down, it goes to month four, five, six. So it's a whole year total. So, you know, it's kind of showing you quarterly each operating expense. Here's another uh, way to view it in two different cells instead of doing four, broken up in six months on the top, six months on the bottom. Now, you guys will, won't be showing this, but you'll be showing your, your charts that you did for um, your budgets, for your yearly budgets. All right, so also what's included is your monthly budget. You guys will be putting your yearly budget in there. And I think this is kind of where I got confused because when I taught this three years ago, we did do monthly instead of yearly. So I think that was where the confusion was whenever I was showing the, the demo there. So we had to break it down monthly, and this is an example of a monthly budget that one of the students did. So again, they're showing salary minus expenses and then the total within there. Um, also in here, which you guys will not have to worry about, but there is, um, you need to know what the appendix, what kind of is in the appendix for the quiz and just for general knowledge as well. So the appendix is startup cost charts, monthly budget charts, projected operating expense charts, and resume. Um, if you want to, you can do the where you show your financials. You can do an appendix and show just your your yearly financials in there if you want to kind of show it in that section. And you know, feel free if you want to put your resume in there as well. You know, obviously that's not included in the actual project list, but that doesn't mean you don't have to add it in there. Just make sure you have all those sections that are listed in there. Um, before we go forward with um, anything, I did want to show you a few more. I showed a couple examples of the business plan to you guys yesterday, and I found a few more, actually four more. So I figured it's always good to, it's fun to see other people's work. I'll show you these four. And then also just don't forget that these examples were done a few years ago. Like I said, the, the class was a little different. So you're gonna have something very similar, but some of the things in here you might not have as, uh, in you know page by page. So just make sure you're going through, just being inspired by what you see, see how people designed it, how they did their pages. And then just make sure that you're ha you know you have all the sections that are in your assignment for in included. Here's the cover. Here is the table of contents that this particular student did. Executive summary. Nice little uh, three paragraphs there, kind of talking about company business description and vision and in, included in this is mission statement company vision business goals and objectives key people in the organization and then the next page is products and services so within that obviously is product products and services uh, and competitiveness within there as well Organization and management, business legal structures included, license permits needed. And this is stuff that you kind of dug into the first week. Remember when you did that paper? Um, startup caught or how what you need to start a business, you know, license and permits definitely can be included in there. Key manager bio, something different added in there. Marketing and sales strategy. So here you have it broken down and this person has it broken down in target market. Promotional promotion strategies, pricing strategies, and channels of distribution. Uh, SWOT analysis. This is just to uh, find out your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. That's what that means. SWOT is, uh, you know, your kind of what that abbreviates out to be. So you have strengths 
you can put down the strengths of your businesses. What are the weaknesses that, you know, be, be pretty honest. What are the opportunities that you have? And then what are your threats? It kind of gives you a nice scope of what you, you know, what you need to work on or what you need to capitalize on. All right, and then this is, I believe, the appendix, which is not titled, but it, since it has the charts here and it's showing you the graphic design business return on investment charts, this is the appendix. I would say probably having some type of headline would be nice there. All right, so that's one of the students. This is another one. A lot of work um, going into these for sure. I thought this one turned out quite well. Um, nicely designed, nice logo, very unique. Table of contents, nicely laid out. You definitely can read the information easily. It's very easy to follow, but visually interesting. And that, you know, it goes with his whole theme. Executive summary broken down. And then a nice little mission statement here. Um, and we got some more people in here. Welcome, Brittany. I don't know when you joined us, but welcome. We're just looking at some more examples of student um, business plans. Here is the business description, business ownership, company vision, goals and objectives, and business advantage sections. I like how he, you know, made these kind of pop out look like they're three-dimensional with the drop shadows, kind of a nice layered look marketing products and services and nice little pull out highlighted area here saying some of the examples like logos business cards postcards brochures flyers posters invitation banners but then it's written out a little bit um, explaining a little bit more so it says they will offer a variety of services and products for our potential and existing clients we will offer services to create brand identity logo designs press kits ordering online consulting creating campaigns for radio and television as the business continues to grow, there may be some more options to be added later to better serve our target market. Very nicely stated. Doesn't kind of includes a lot. Some is very specific and some is very kind of open, open-ended. So it kind of gives way for, um, you know, somebody to say, oh, they might do that instead of looking at it and go, oh, they definitely don't do that. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to keep it open-ended that way as well, but specific enough where people understand what it is that you do. Target market, um, and you can read in here kind of how this student, let me zoom in here and broke this down here, target market. So um, they said the target market will consist of owners of small businesses that employ two to 15 people, also will provide needed services to individuals who either works independently for their own business or those who work as a part of a larger corporation. These individuals are from 25 years of age to 70, also, there are nonprofit organizations like churches that are seeking to get information out to the community and uh, that need our services to help improve their identity in the city. Our target market will be will be through a series will come through a series of networking opportunities and client referrals. And then the advertising strategy um, kind of you know nicely stated here too, if you want to read through this. Um, you know, giving that whole idea of what they do and you know, a little bit more specific uh, in the steps. Pricing, and again, they're kind of keeping it a little bit open for determination, but kind of breaking it down. That's kind of nice when you don't really state exactly what you're charging to because then you have some wiggle room if somebody were to come to you with a bigger project or a smaller project, depending, that you're not kind of in set in stone. All right, um, distribution, this is marketing continued. So we're talking about distribution. Um, okay, and then operations, proprietorship, uh, sole proprietorship will be the best choice for this business. The structure at this moment is best for Bignon Designs because it would be only one person in control of all operations. So, you know, it's a little different if you're looking at just yourself, but that's nicely stated. Just be simple and sweet. Licenses and permits. 
uh, equipment needs, kind of talking about what, you know, what are the needs of the actual business. Going into the final financial startup costs, operation expenses, monthly budget, annual budget, simple and sweet. And then the appendix, which shows all of that information. So you have, you know, it's placed in here nicely where it, it works, you know, looks interesting. It's not the same gridded structure. It's kind of nice uh, and, and more visually interesting in this way, but you can definitely read it still. So again, this is showing six months for each um, section here for the projecting co operating costs. And then here is the monthly income chart for 12 months. And then um, this is nice. This is kind of a nice little back cover here, which has his full name, a little personal uh, statement. This is like his resume here, education, work experience. Um, talks about uh, his experiences, technical skills, awards, and then obviously contact information. Okay. Another one, I'll go through this quickly here. So you can tell how different these are, but you know, it, it's based on how they want to show themselves as a designer. Kind of broken down here. This one's a little, I think a little harder to read. You have this very casual writing and just a lot, a lot of text on every page. So it's a little, little harder to read through. It's very overwhelming looking, but you can at least see um, each different example and kind of compare and contrast. All right, last one, last but not least. Actually, I think this is, no, this is a student. Okay, I thought this was an actual example that I found, but this is a student. There we go, nicely done. So, I mean, even the size of this is different. It's not quite an eight and a half by 11. It's slightly longer, kind of interesting. And then obviously, you know, they're going with that two color um, pop of the yellow and the black. You have the white as well. Executive summary. And then every page is a little different here. Business ownership, owner qualifications, business advantage versus competition. So it's nice to have it variated here. Marketing, nicely stated and visually interesting and kind of is easy to follow with these lines and how that's all working there. It's very unified because of that too. All the elements unify very nicely together. All right, so it goes into market segmentation market size, advertising strategy, and pricing. Goes into operations section, management structure, hiring and personal procedures, facility information, and it, you know, simple, simple and sweet here. Financial management, startup costs, projected operation expenses, monthly operating budget, projected cash flow, monthly cash flow, and then account management. And here's the appendix nicely done, the little, with typography here. Um, this is kind of like an infograph, which is nice. You know, nice to see something visual like this. It's a little hard to read because it is uh, on a vertical and it's more horizontally. Uh, probably would read a little bit better horizontally. Um, but it, you know, if you're holding this in your hands, you could flip it. Uh, but just, you know, very interesting and it goes with the whole theme. So you can see kind of their chart here and um, read their annual business and personal costs. All right, so that's uh, some things to think about <coughs> when you're doing your, excuse me, <coughs> you know, be inspired by, see what other people are doing um, to kind of align yours accordingly. And sometimes it's hard to see other people's work because you kind of think, ah, you know, I'm not going to come up with any creative ideas or be able to do something different because I'm seeing all these, you know, these really good ideas that I want to do. But um, 
you know, I think sometimes that can pose a problem, but I think it, I think it is more beneficial just to, to see what other people have done, to see the comparison, to see the differences and how unif you know, how it unifies with their whole theme and how each page works. It might not be repeatedly the same in regards to the grid structure, but you can see that the style is the same. It's just kind of switching up in um, how they're showing it, presenting it. So it's not boring. Are we using master pages for this? Um, you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, you know, obviously, it's good to get in that habit, but you know. Uh, is master page, uh, when you say pages, how many pages is it? Or is that in the instructions? Uh, let's see here. I think it is. I think it's, I'm not sure. Let me see here. And if you already have, uh, like Brittany just asked, if you already have a resume, do we just update it or part with the one that we've used in it? Um, well, I would say if you have a resume and you want to include it, I would definitely update it to make sure it kind of looks like it's a part of everything that you've been doing in this class. <coughs> so if you haven't, say you, you did a resume and then you put it in there and it doesn't look anything like what you have in there, I would definitely revise it just for this project so that it, it's cohesive. Does that make sense? Because you saw the examples, you saw the resumes in the back and they all kind of match that whole theme that they were in. Right. They didn't look like they were something completely off, like different, you know, element wise. So, you know, even if it's just saving as and creating just one for this project, that, you know, that's kind of what I would do if you include it. Now, you don't have to include it if you don't want to. It's not listed in the um, area here where you must include these sections. I'm not sure why they don't have you included in here anymore, but it doesn't mean that you don't have to. You know, obviously you can if you want. Now, as far as page numbering goes, I don't think, does it even say? I don't think it says pages, like a specific page number. Nope. So there's your answer there. <laughs> Uh, you know, you could do each section here. You could do a page each section. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be seven pages. Um, cover page, eight pages. Let me see if uh, people are chatting here. I just lost my chat area. No, you don't have to have a resume in there because it's not listed in there. Now, when I taught this three years ago, they needed to. That's why, that's why you see that. And that's why you see me kind of showing resume examples. And, but I stated every time I showed you that, that you guys did not have to have this included because the instructions do not have that included in there. But you can put one in there if you'd like. Any other questions? Are you guys currently working on this? Are you, where are you at on this? Yes. You'll be very soon, okay. I'm still in the thought process of it. Okay. All right, well maybe these, you know, maybe just going over examples will help you kind of get started. And like I said, if, if you, I think, you know, it might help you just to kind of download that demo that I, or the template that I gave you guys to start. I think there were eight pages in my optional template. So I just provided an option, optional template that you can download. And I showed this yesterday uh, in the, oh, where did I find it? In lecture. And feel free to use this if you want. If you don't, no big deal. I was just kind of thinking that maybe it would help you guys out, especially because there's so much in here. Um, I didn't want you guys to feel overwhelmed. So I wanted to give you kind of like a nice head start if you needed it. Um, I'm opening that up right now so I can show you what that looks like. We did go over it yesterday, but sometimes it's nice to see it again. 
uh, the, I was going to show you here. You don't have to have references and citations in your assignment four unless you're actually taking information from another source and you're copying it directly. And that's either imagery wise or copy wise. It should be, the copy that you're providing should be pretty much like in your own words. And a lot of this you're just gonna be making up to make it sound like, you know, what it is that you're providing as a company. So a lot of it is kind of like you making this up, kind of like sounding good for, because obviously, you know, we have to do, we have to base it off of something. So this is the template that I provided, I believe it. So let me see here. How many pages is this? It's eight, six, it's six pages. So a little shorter table contents with the cover page. You can break this up. You know, obviously this is four sections here in the executive summary, so you can, you can kind of break this out as well as this too. So that's why it's kind of shorter in, in pages. And again, if you want to add uh, an appendix after this, that's fine. If you want to even add a back cover with just your logo and web address, that's fine. Completely up to you. You saw the examples. Hopefully that kind of gave you an idea of, of what you can do with yours. And I'm going to kind of open it up. We're going to, it's going to probably be a shorter uh, lecture today. So if you want to get any files that you want to show, anything that you want to talk about, do that now. I'm going to, if you guys don't have any questions so far, besides getting to that point, I'm going to kind of just review a little bit of assessment. I can't tell you guys what's on the quiz, but I just want to point out some things so that you're a little bit more aware of what might be on the quiz. And the quiz is, I believe, only going to be, let's see here, seven questions. I thought it was 10 because I took a look at it. Okay. I thought about doing that tonight when I made my my discussion post to get that out of the way. Yeah. Let me see. Maybe it is 10 questions. It always needs to. Uh... Because when I looked at it, it was short answers, but I don't know if they were true or uh, if it was uh, typed out questions or if it was uh, you clicked on them. So. Seven questions and it's not time. So yeah, seven questions and it's not timed. I thought I thought I saw seven somewhere. Uh, I must have. I, was, I, got, I thought I was losing my mind there. Okay. I thought um, it was done. I must have misread it somewhere. It's okay. It's okay. I have a question about the business plan. Um, I was thinking for the background, can I use the uh, pink background that I've been using or is that going to be too much? I would use whatever you've been using. Whoops. Um, I don't think it would be too much for the background as long as it's not getting in the way of the information. Well, I was thinking it's like, um, I was thinking when I go to actually um, I would do like a trial thing where I would put it on and then start like typing information. And if it's too much that I could like turn down the opacity of the, of the background, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yep. You could do that. That's one way of, you know, making it easier to, to see here. Just that, you know, just make sure you have enough contrast. If, if you feel like you're squinting your eyes and, you know, it's hard to read, then that's probably the case. So just kind of make sure you have enough contrast for readability. Because really, you know, you want your presentation to look nice and you want it to unify, but you don't want to get it, get it, it, it shouldn't get in the way of the information. Meaning it shouldn't stick out more and make it harder to see the important information that's inside it. All right. And like I said, uh, let me just do a quick review and then we'll go back to any questions that you might have if you wanna show anything, um, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So this is actually, this quiz is on creating a business plan. Uh, you guys will want to go to your course media page, which has a link here, to look at week four um, information and required readings. And that's exactly what you need to do. 
um, just to kind of read through each of these articles here. And we looked at this yesterday, just like a breakdown of two different styles of business plans. So we talked about the lean and traditional. But what's interesting and what you guys should read into more is about each section. So just kind of read through these a little bit more. Um, you know, as far as like, what is a marketing goal? What would be a marketing goal? Example. Um, let's see. Yeah. You know, what, what does a good business plan provide a business? Think about that. Okay, and, um, you know, I don't even think we went over this here. Let me see if it's in this link. Business plan, let me see here, marketing strategy. So go ahead and read through all of these. Um, th these will be essential for, oh, I'll get that little doggy. This will be essential for your quiz as well. And I don't know if this actually goes over this or not. Let me see if it's in here. Clear plans. All right, I guess it's not in there. Just kind of look up. This might be in your other information, but we didn't talk about it. Um, the advantages of creating a moon chart for uh, help you determine, uh, you know, as far as your competitors are concerned. And I'm not sure if I can find the right thing here. I probably Googled something wrong, but here. No, I probably did. Poor business plan. Uh, Hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to find this in here. It talks about that, and I don't see it in your actual, uh, unless it's in the course media. Let's see here. Hmm, presenting your portfolio. Let's see your mistakes. This is another article talking about the 10 business plan mistakes detail All right, let me get back to you guys on that because I'm not quite sure. It talks about something about a moon chart and I don't see that from the readings that I saw, so I'll get back to you guys on that. And if I find anything, I'll place it in the uh, announcements. But, um, you know, think about, you know, um, let's see here. You know, just kind of know what an executive summary is so that whenever you're taking the quiz, you know what, what it actually is. And that's the section in here. Let me see if I can get to it here. Executive summary. So just read through this. Now, my question is, uh, is it written out or is it choices? Oh, it's, it's multiple choice. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then just kind of know what's included in app appendix. And I think that's shown down here too. You know, just kind of study that. What I really like about untimed uh, quizzes is that you can actually take your time mm -hmm. to make sure that you have the right answer. Instead of being like, okay, why well, don't we have a certain amount of time? And then, you know, you just like, 
most people when it comes to quizzes like that, they tend to guess at the answers or they uh, take uh, their time with some of them and then just quickly answer the last, you know, last couple of them in, in hope that they have it right. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I love non-timed quizzes. You can actually take your time to make sure you get it right. Right. Yeah. And whenever I was going through my master's online, we used to have timed projects. So we would literally open up the project on our, in, through our system, and they would time you from the time that you turn the next page. They would give you the project description, and then as soon as you hit next, there was a countdown. It would give you like two hours to create the whole project and submit it. So there was like, and it wasn't always like that with certain classes, but it was like, oh my gosh. This is <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought timed quizzes were bad, but time yeah, projects. Like a whole project, yeah, yep. It was like kind of crazy, but it kind of got you going through your process that what they wanted you to do is pretty much everything that you were learning was about your, your design process and they wanted you test to test you into how, how can you go through your process steps more accurately and effectively so that you can come up with ideas, solutions, create it right to the there. Because a lot of times if you think about it, and this is my experience too at ad agencies. You come, you know, people come to you, you'll, you'll have a client come to you and they'll want something the next day or even the same day. So you have to be quick on your feet. And that's just one of the things that you, if you go through your design process steps, you should be able to do that very quickly. So that was kind of one of the, that was like the training part of it. I mean, obviously I was already used to that because I've been working in the field for many years, but it was just a little harder because we were learning new, new concepts, new things that we had to show. So it was a little bit more tricky and just knowing that you're in school and you're getting your grade is a little, <laughs> you know, a little bit more um, stressful, I guess. I but, can get my projects done in, you know, the full week, let alone two hours. I know. That's why they say when you go for your master's, especially at SCAD, you probably shouldn't have like a full-time job because it's just, it's really demanding. It's a lot of work. It's very intense. But, um, and online school is already kind of like that. But when you go for your graduate degree, it's, and it's depending upon the school. Like I went to one of the top 10 design schools in the country. So of course their program is going to be very rigorous and hard. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, testing you as a, as a, as a designer and a person, but I got through it and I got all A's. So I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> that. I'm not saying that it was easy. You know, there was times I was crying and, you know, just like you guys just pull my hair out. So um, yeah, I remember that for one of my design classes. I think it was one of my associates who we were doing a uh, web page, like you know, not a web page, but like designing for different types of platforms, like you know, cell phone, laptop, that kind of thing. And I obviously had until you know Saturday, like usual, to get the thing done. And Thursday night, every like half of what I did was like. I don't know what I did. I must have um, hit like a wrong button or something. And half of my work was just gone. I had to literally take like three hours or so just to get the rest of it back. I barely oh, yeah. had time. And listen, I know because I was my, I had, I have 18, 18 plus years of experience. I was going through my master's. I had the same thing happen to me, Brittany. I was like, I went through a whole project for a whole day, created the whole thing, and then you know what I did? I accidentally deleted it off my computer. And you know what I really kicked myself for? Because I'm the one, and I was teaching for two years before I actually went back to school, telling my students, back up your work, back up your work. <laughs> Here I am, oh my gosh, I didn't back up my work. So, you know, it's like one of those things that you're just, you just, sometimes it happens. Yeah, when it comes to that, actually, what was it? I think it was my last computer. Um, I have to save my work on like two separate flash drives now because with my last computer, something happened and the whole like the whole system like crashed. All of my stuff was like on the actual hard drive and everything of the computer was lost. I was lucky that I had the, my stuff actually saved on the flash drive. Otherwise, I would have lost everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is, tell, tell you why, it's like heart, heart attack city. You put a lot of time and energy in that 
blood, sweat, and tears. So yeah, I know that feeling. It's like such, and then to get to redo it, to actually have to go back and, and start all over again, it just takes the wind out of your sails. You know, it's like, ah, oh. you know, and you have life going on. It's not just like you're just a student that's a high school student, has nothing going on. You know, they live, you know, you have a lot of life things happening. So you have to balance all that and going to school and some people have two jobs. You know, it's like a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, like, for the simple projects, like, you know, like a business plan, which is kind of simple if you really think about it, it's not all that hard to, you know, just redo it, but when it comes to something really complex and you lose it, it's like, I can't remember exactly what I put down for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So I, I completely understand, like, I've been there, I've done that, I've... Even whenever I was an undergrad student, I lost work, definitely lost, like, you know, back then I was, we were using jazz drives, don't laugh at me, and uh, <laughs> not floppy disks, but like stuff like that, because it was so long ago. Now, you know, going back to school for my master's, I graduated in 2012, so it's a little bit more modern, but uh, even back whenever I was an undergrad, I lost stuff, and it was like so heartbreaking, and it was like, I, even when I was working for companies, I would lose stuff. I mean, it's just something, I mean, it's not good, but you go through that experience and you learn and you, you kind of grow from that, hopefully, and not do it again. But, you know, it happens to the best of us for sure. And it's, when you're working for somebody, it, it really hurts because you know you're like, you know, under the spotlight and you might not have a job the next day. But, you know, you're, you're pretty much trying to prove yourself every day. So if you're a good employee and you have a good track record, sometimes they can overlook mistakes like that, but we're all human, right? <laughs> so, all right. So, you know, just, I, I went over some things to review for your quiz. I don't want to obviously say what's on the quiz, but I, I think I did a good job with saying, Hey, you know, this is what to look for and study up on this and uh, make sure you, you know, read through everything. So hopefully that'll kind of help you along there. All right, so with that being said, I'm just going to turn it over to you guys. Yeah, my uh, sister is really happy right now because she came over and she was like, guess what happened? I'm like, what? Usually when she says that, it's bad news. Uh -oh. So like, what happened? She was like, my laptop came in. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh. <laughs> Who is this, your sister? Huh? Your sister? Yeah, the one who's... Uh, who I actually managed to convince to uh, go to the same school as me. She's going for some kind of uh, the medical field, I think. She's taking a uh, bachelor's for her medical field. Oh, okay. So, yeah, apparently she's had um, problems with the keyboard or whatever it was that she had with her tablets. Oh. And she was like, yeah, I'm glad I'm going to be getting my laptop because apparently she got mad, but she didn't do anything. Like, she I actually didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. but she got back and I kept messing up on her. I'm like, yeah, that's what happened with mine. Especially with, with the tablet that I had, it would not stick connected to the internet. Oh. Yeah, there was like a hard drive in it because I actually managed to go to the, um, the uh, technical support for, you know, that kind of stuff. I managed, I at least went there about three times a day. It was, oh it was actually messing up that bad. Oh, my. Yeah, it would not stay connected to the internet. Apparently, it was the uh, hard drive problem. So you were doing design work on your tablet? Um, yeah, I was. I was back in my associates. Yes. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yep. I'm telling you, it was hard to do. I mean, especially with the fact that it was such a small screen. I was gonna say, yeah, that'd be really challenging. <laughs> yeah, I had to learn to zoom. Every, like every section that I did, I had to zoom in, but. Yeah, I was, so, I was so excited when I got a 27-inch screen monitor for my graduate studies. So you could put two side-by-side, eight-and-a-half by 11 pages, that full view, and be able to work on both of them. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah, I mean, like, the keyboard that I had was okay. But like I said, the internet, literally, the hard drive in that thing, it just it wouldn't it just wouldn't work out. <laughs> so when I got my laptop, I'm like, thank you. So you know, we're actually stay connected. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a luxury you didn't even think you were gonna have. Yeah. Everybody usually just has takes for for granted, I guess, right? 
Yeah, and with the battery problem with my other laptop, I was like, okay, this, this laptop was and all that um, old, but then I realized I actually had that one since my associate. So I'm like, eh, it is a little old. It's probably over two years old now, so. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's like, okay, I understand that. Yeah, the battery literally would not charge. It had to say connected to the charger, and if you, if you took it off the charger, it would shut off. No. That's how bad the battery. Yeah, that's that would be annoying for sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> so now it's like, yay, you have something that actually works. Yep. It does suck up a lot of your time when things don't work like that. So I understand your frustration. <laughs> yep. That's funny. The only problem with this one is the fact that it has that USB-C type of, you know, ports and everything. But I got something that will actually... Help me with that. I got like a little like side stick, I guess you could say, that I that will uh, help me with HDMI um, cable hookups in case I need them, um, and uh, USB ports for like the flash drive so I can save my work. So okay, very good. I'm actually looking forward to this assignment. I love doing design. I come to find out, I have a knack for design work. There you go. I think when you have a love for it, it comes easy to, to oh, those who do have a love for it. So thinking, like you're actually doing design work for, you know, for like to show an actual company, it's like those ideas just start coming. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's nice about the, your design process steps is if you don't have those ideas coming, that's kind of what helps you get those ideas. Because, you know, we're, sometimes we're not always creative every day or thinking of creative ideas. Mm -hmm. I know how that is. <laughs> when, I first, when I did my first um, design thing, I was like, I'm not sure what exactly I have to do. I never had to do anything like this before. So once I actually got into the swing of it, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, this is all I got to really do. Just be in this mindset and it'll just come to me. So, mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, when I first started, what was it? Yeah, when I first started, it was my associate. I thought design was like, cartoons and like uh, that kind of stuff until I find out that I was actually advertising design for like business and stuff and I was like oh it's actually not it's not what I thought it was but apparently I am actually very good at it yeah well it's always good to get that different ex experience too you never know all right so do we have anything you guys want to share want to go over no nope, I think I'm good I mean I would share my project but I haven't actually started it quite yet so okay that's okay no problem Thomas is all quiet over there yeah he yeah actually, I am yeah he actually helped me on um what was it I think it was last week's assignment oh okay yeah was, um I asked him I'm like yeah I don't know if I'm actually if I have enough or I have more than enough and he they kind of took a look at it he was like you actually have more than enough if you really look at it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's good. You guys are collaborating. That's good to hear. Well, yeah, we were contacting through. Uh, it was really confusing because my mom ended up killing my son's fish by mistake. Ooh. So when she contacted me, uh, I was trying to contact her with no internet because my data sucks because I'm on Sprint. So I was trying to communicate, and my texting is horrible. Like, I... My texting is beyond readable sometimes, especially if I don't take my time with it. Mm -hmm. Well, not having internet and being on the road and talking uh, on the phone and, uh, I mean, not on the phone, but, uh, yeah, texting on the phone, listening to music, talking to her, trying to interact with my kid. My te I had her all confused. So... <laughs> I felt like really, really, really bad. So when me and her actually sat down and actually got a time, because the town I was in was like 45 minutes away. And I didn't know what time zone she was in. So it was already like 7 o'clock my time, which I wouldn't have been home until, af until after 8 my time. So, I, I, so that's got all messed up on exactly whose time frame was where <laughs> um but yeah once I actually got in front of uh zoom and me and her actually got to uh 
talk. Yeah, I come to find out she actually helped me with mine for that assessment as well because I looked over it. I because I was starting on mine, but for some reason I I was so overwhelmed I was was forgetting to save my work. Yeah, okay. But literally, once I actually showed her that she had more than enough, she actually helped me with mine afterwards because of the colors that I used and everything else. Yeah, I was thinking, what was it? Um, I think he was saying something about the color of his text versus the background color. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's, you know, it's actually going to show up or not, and I actually helped him out with that. So, yeah. yeah. It was going to help him with the school project, which I honestly have to say at this point, I know I haven't turned that in yet, but it's like that's week two and this is week four. I'm not even sure if the points that I'm getting by the time I turn that in would even be worth it. I mean, I would turn it in no matter what. <laughs> Definitely. All instructors say that. There's been a few times where I still pass the class with not turning in my assignments. So. Well, I think that sometimes design classes are a little different. I think, you know, uh, it's okay so design is hard to teach because it is design especially online so I think that you know design instructors need to be a little bit more flexible with students um, about stuff certain things I mean deadlines are very important but when you're learning design there's also that gray area where you're, you're not you know in comparison, if you're in a math class, you know, four plus four, you get that answer. But in design, there's that gray area, that process that you need to go through. So, you know, oh. when life happens and stuff happens, I would rather see you work through it than, you know, and then actually see you get it done before class is over. Because that's yeah, you, 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 know, you have always told me that every time I have you as an instructor. Yeah. You have always told me that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think, I know, I, I mean, I would rather have you go back and learn learn it and do it rather than just well, I can give up and not do it or just do it quick. Well, and, I can show you what I have for week two so far, and that's about it. It's up to you. We have some time. Okay. Yeah, when it comes Hold on. To Hold on. Stuff, whether or not, you know, you have them, you turn them in late. No, um, some points is always better than no points from what I've learned. Yeah, and there are certain students that don't log in, you know, for, for many weeks and you don't hear from them, and those that's a different case too. So everybody's kind of different, but um, I, I'm a little bit more flexible with people who are always constantly talking with me and communicating with me. Um, okay, so my mom had to ask me a question. I didn't want that on video so I muted myself so yeah because she actually helped me with my logo believe it or not Brittany did because okay. for some reason it was still coming in as a vector image even uh -huh. after you showed me the tools that you showed me uh-huh and Brittany had to show me how to fix that where it was yeah it was so pixelated much. yeah it was really pixelated even with it being created in uh, illustrator Yep. Okay. Hmm. I actually had problems with that myself with one of them. So I just looked up online and come to find out that there's actually something in the preferences that you can adjust to have it, you know, like look clear, but, but, you know, I mean, not too pixelated, but still clear at the same time. Oh, are you talking about like the quality of your viewing screen? Yep. Yep. That's it. Yeah, because I looked it up, and I'm like, I'm not really sure how I, you know, fix this. I can't remember, so I looked it up, and I was like, oh, okay. So I told him what to do, and when I actually adjusted those, it actually looked a lot better than it did, so. Yeah, because there's, like, a quick view, and then there's, yeah, they do that for a reason. So if you have, like, a ton of information or a ton of pages with a lot of stuff, sometimes it takes a while to scroll through and view stuff, but if you do it in a quick view, which is a low-res view, it's easier to to operate. Oh um, my, I'm, uh, I'm trying to click on my folder and it's already opened. Uh, I've uh, learned that when it comes to design, you always have to go high res for some reason. Okay, I forgot what I named it. 
I'm normally not this unorganized with my classes. Very unorganized with this class. Uh. Hey, Thomas, if you ever in a, another you know, class that I'm in, I'm not saying that you will be or you won't be, but if you ever, you know, if you ever are, you can always, you know, come to me for help if you need help with, with any classes. Well, ones that either that you're currently in that I've already taken or ones that we are both currently in. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I do. That's why I gave you my email address yep. and phone number. So this way if, but yeah. Oh, that's great. And believe it or not, Brittany, I know this is going to sound really, really, really bad, but you're like the only one that has actually came, other than one other student, like I told you, but you're like the only one that I actually went, was able to do any type of help with as far as the student coming to me because, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I know how that is. Um, for my last class, I think, I literally asked help from the instructor and, like, three of the uh, students that were in there other than me. And other than the instructor, you know, kind of, like, giving back to me, none of the students I actually asked for help actually helped me. They said either I didn't take class or they, or they just wouldn't, you know, respond to me at all so exactly and normally i have somebody i have a few that ask me for help but like but that was like in the student success center though i would have some of the instructors help me and like hey you took in this course what's going on here and then i would have to look up the course and like they changed it on me since i took it and then i wouldn't have a clue but that's different than actually doing one on one in Zoom and not being in uh, Student Success Center, which reminds me, I got to get in there and make an appointment before it's too late. Um, okay, now I'm trying to think. Brittany, you might have to help me out here. <laughs> Do you remember where we went? to change the effect of that logo. Oh, you're talking about the clarity? Yeah. Um, View display performance. Uh, it's under view. Yeah, display performance. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Display okay. performance. That should okay. save that preference in there once you change it. So. Well, display. it is, but I'm trying to show... Yeah, go to the end uh, the InDesign thing. Yeah. yeah. But now, if if you wanted to stay at high quality, you should be able to change that even in your design prefer uh, preferences. Yeah, but there was something I needed to show you that was. Yeah, you can go to the uh, the InDesign the actual letter the thing. Yeah, no, the InDesign name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. I'm actually going to find that file because I want to show you the difference of the logo that we made. I forgot. There it is. Oh, yeah. And then I'm going to try. Yeah, you can definitely tell the difference of the clarity when it comes to that. <laughs> yeah, because I want to. I actually had the problems with that myself when I, I was in my past design classes. I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to do it. Open. Okay, one, I understand it's big. Okay, I guess it did save it, but, oh, before, yeah. but before it was like really, really pixelated. Yeah, you can, you can tell. It looks like it just like the whole thing just looked like little boxes. Oh, yeah, that's probably because you had your display performance too fast or typical. No. Oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, no. that's going to show you for placement boxes only. Yeah, no, that's not what I wanted. Go back up to view. You're fine. It didn't delete it. Yeah, I know it didn't. I want to say there, but yeah. I want to say there was something in... 
the, I want to say, because I will, because I'm trying to see if there was a way to show you what it looked like before. We well, pulled in that one on the left, and it, if you hit W in your keyboard, you'll see the one on your left again. Not when I have backspaced it and undid it. Oh, okay. want, yeah, because I'm wanting to see something. Is it okay if I do uh, remote control because I can show I can actually go to where I. You can. Yeah. If I do, is it okay, April? If I do the remote control. Yeah, remote control, and I can. Yeah. Is remote control to yeah? There we go. Okay. Oh wait, I don't know if I can do it on your. There you go. Ah, whoa, cool. Yeah, see, uh... Oh, it's preferences. Spray, yeah. there you go, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was in there. See? Yeah. It, yeah. That's where it was. And then if yeah, you, It says like, typical, so you want to change that to the high if you want that to change on the very top. Okay. The default view. Yeah, if you want that always to be high, yeah. And then click yeah, okay. They, yeah, because, like, the graphics and everything, it's, like, right in the middle. You can definitely tell that i mean it was wow yeah. Yeah, well, now that i have it hold on Brittany. now that i have it then you pulled it up thank you it was literally like this and it was it was on typical mm -hmm. but even the quality was like somewhere yeah it's like somewhere in the middle i think yeah somewhere like this and when i clicked okay you see oh. that's yeah that's what it was before mm-hmm yeah, so it's just showing you a very quick look. It's not exactly how it's going to print. So they're, the reason why they have that in there is if you have a ton of, of really high-res images in there and it's taking forever to view your document and your pages, you can just view it very quickly by showing a lower res, but it's not necessarily how it's going to print. Okay, well... So you always want to kind of go back to the high-res just to see if everything looks okay because that's how it's really going to print. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it showed me online on how to actually change it. <laughs> so, any, so even if I created something in Photoshop, could you not use that same technique or no? Photoshop's a little different in how you view your screen. Well, if I put it in, if I put it in with, Actually, I don't think it should matter when it comes to the uh, what programs you use. I mean, as long as you have like that uh, quality thing up all the way, it shouldn't make any difference, should it? What's that? When it comes to bringing things in from like Photoshop and stuff, you when it comes to uh, the quality, the uh, quality performance, it shouldn't have, make a difference if the uh, quality is all you know actually set to all the same so I don't think it should matter what should it um it so you're saying if it's a high res if it's a high resolution image in Photoshop and you're placing it in InDesign is that uh, what you're saying yes well, well yeah because like uh right as now as long as it's high res you're good it's just how you're viewing it in InDesign is how you're how it's gonna oh. show on your screen and it's not necessarily gonna print that way Oh. I am trying to find that. Ah, here it is. This is my PDF. This is my mood board. Yeah, I can't believe I was able to de destruct it and turn it in what you did to what it is. Now, this right here, I don't know if I could. Anyways, it's probably not going to let me edit it at all. So. Yeah, so I'm going to literally uh, go away. Come on, go away. Anyways, go away. So, what well, I'm literally going to have P A R T Y. Yeah, now it's going to type slow. Oh man, I hate it when they do that. I don't know if that was even me. 
Okay, that's what it was. P R T W. Okay. Now, the way I wanted this, and I don't know if it was going to work or not, because, like I said, I haven't really put much time into this. But what I wanted to do, the style I wanted was impact and the reason I wanted the impact was for no it wasn't impact it was something really really creative I'm not even sure if it's uh, come on why did you okay thank you um, So I wanted it to kind of have that party theme, but I wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. And that is, I know I should have it in here. It would load this one. I saved this. Well, it was similar to that. I know what I'm looking for exactly what I'm looking for because it was something to that but I think I might have to re-download it or go to my fonts book if I can't find it okay so you're just basically trying to find a font that matches with that theme uh, what so what are you, you, what's your whole concept for the postcard <sighs> entertaining Okay, so what's your focus that you like? What's your focus of what you're trying to do as far as trying to make the postcard? And uh, because I was in, the, I'm actually in the mindset on a postcard. When you see a postcard, normally like for a state or something, it is basically the state and like the Alamo for Texas. And I have looked these up, and it's just basically a picture and the state that it's in there's nothing other than that that's a postcard so and get, that that whole, get that whole concept out of your head because this isn't like a postcard showing your destination this is a postcard promoting who you are as a designer and what you're offering oh, then that's easy like i said uh with that with like i stated not too long ago it's entertaining something that well that would be entertaining to see um like an invitation or something i'm more or less trying to go with entertaining people that's why i went through the whole thing with that because i find that like it's that's like something that you haven't seen before so okay well you have to make sure that you're making it work for who you are as a designer too you know you have to make it so that you know if you're if you're focused on providing design work say for um invitations that could definitely work you know if you want to hone in on that but you have to make sure it's, it's working for what your the services that you're providing and that's also working for your brand and who you are as a designer I can't believe. Or else it'll be confusing. Right. I can't believe. I'm really hoping that my font. Where is my font? I'm really hoping it's still in my font book. So I really don't want to go to default and re download it. Because I should have broken glass and horror film or horror uh, fonts and everything else I even have some transformer fonts that I downloaded okay. are you serious Sega is it not Oh. 
Are you serious? Okay, well, give me a minute because I'm literally going to have to. Oh, I really, really, really. I'm really, really hoping I can find this slot again. That's all. I don't know if I'm spilling. That's why I might not be spilling it right. Well, I think I'm going to... Leave there we go. Nice. That's the font that I was looking for. And there's the font. Then that font is what I was having, and that's the font that I was thinking about using. And it's literally... There it is. And that's the font that I was going to use with this, but I didn't know if it worked before. I'm surprised I have to re-download it. Surprised it didn't save in my font book, but then again, uh, how do I open up the font? There we go. Okay, so now that I have it, it should. You have to double click over top of the true type font that you, you didn't fully do yet, so that's probably why. What? What are you saying? That folder that opened up that you clicked on, you have to double click on it or else it won't download. This one? Double click on that, yeah. Install. And then and then um, it'll say downloading. Or installing, yeah. Or installing, yep. There we go. Now, so that means I got to go back and re-download all my fonts I used to have because there's, there's even some Transformers fonts I had that was like really cool um again entertaining that's probably one reason why but i didn't know if this was going to work especially with the colors that i was gonna choose now remember that typeface has um a lot of origin kind of like where you know people see it as coming from that specific brand Right. Be aware of, you know, be aware of that, that you're, you know, you don't want to, you know, like the Disney font, you wouldn't represent yourself with the Disney font because that's very recognizable with that brand because it's a word mark, just like Sega is. So just kind of be careful using those types of fonts that are kind of a word mark in itself. Okay. Why is it not letting me use it? It's like jumping over it when I like, Place Type it in your little box there. It says impact. There we go. There you go. And then what I was, and I think, it, yeah, it's regular. But then what I was going to do is like a 20. What? I think, yeah, that's what I was going to do. Because what I was wanting it to do. I think 24 might be a little bit too much. Yeah, okay. That's going to be too much. 
So I was thinking for it to go across the page with it being centered. But what I was wanting to do was use a different color with this font. Again, I see that this is not, there we go, too much. So 20 should be good. And then I wanted to bring it down. I know there's a way to bring it down. I just got to. I gotta figure out how to bring it down so it's not exactly at the top like it is. Maybe like that. There we go. There we go. Perfect. And then what I could do is instead of having the black color, what I was wanting to do is the text, the type, the color. Which, see, I don't remember where to go for the color. You but anyway, in the T for your color fill. The where? Double click on your color fill in your in your toolbar. Oh. There we go. And what the color I was going to pick was this light orange to kind of bounce. That's what I was going with. Something that maybe not that exact font, but as you can tell, it's entertaining. It's you know recognizable. It's definitely, but like you said, it means a lot when it comes to. It's associated with Sega, which you know Sega is basically dying out. So they can you know be like, oh, it's an eye catcher. Why are they using Sega's type? What is this about? And it can be like, oh, wow, it's a comp party company that's using Sega's fonts. And maybe they have Sega decorations or whatever, you know, for a throwback part. That's where my mind was going with entertaining. Okay, yeah. I don't know if it's quite working for this particular project, though, just because it's... Um it's kind of a far stretch. <laughs> I would use like, um, here, let me show you something real quick. I would use probably something more like. You want me to stop sharing? Oh, yeah. okay. Um, Cause that's what I was. And like I said, it is weeks two project and I know it's way overdue. It's just, I don't know. I'm not even sure as far as the patterns are concerned. I, you know, I would kind of rethink of how you're going to do this with making it promote you as a designer. Really think about how you want to talk to people visually, like um, tell them that, you know, you want to do design work for them. And I think that it's okay to, to have fun say, sayings and, and quotes and stuff like that, but it has to make sense for what you're, what you're doing. So, um, Having fun and designing. So is that what I'm going to do is have fun? Like instead of being the party theme like I did in week one, just kind of have fun with designing or something? Yeah, I mean, it could be something very simple. I think sometimes we can just over overlook things and over design things and overthink things. So keep it simple. Something like a funny little thing, you know, even like um, – you know, some of the things that are said now with the hipsters today, you know, like using the LOL and the, you know, those type of acronyms and stuff like that. Okay. You know, something that you yeah, can I'm have bad, bit, uh, bad and habit. You can even do like hashtag having fun while designing. Okay, something, I got you. Something really cool like that, you know, where it's like you're speaking to more, maybe more younger audience. And you don't necessarily need a font that's going to be, you know, crazy and fun. It's just, it is what it is and keep it simple, you know? Gotcha. Having fun um, while designing or, you know, something, something like catchy, you know, I'm not sure if that's like the right wordage or something like that, but, you know, something that's kind of catchy and, and, you, you, I, I know what you're kind of going for. I just don't think you're quite there yet with what you want to, how you want to say it. You know, um, speak, how would you speak to somebody and, and sit down and talk to them? Like if you were to, you know, 
joke with them or something about, um, and I'm not saying like not taking things seriously, but like, right. you know, just in your own words, you know, like, hey, nice to meet you. Gotcha. Um, hey, nice to meet you. Uh, something like, Hey, nice to meet you. And then like maybe on the flip side of the, you know, it could be as simple as that. And then on the flip side of your postcard, you can answer it with, you know, hey, nice to meet you. We'll say that's on the top part of, of the postcard. We'll say this is the postcard, right? Right. Very simple. Doesn't have to be black and white, but just to show you really quickly here. And then the back side. Gotcha. Um, okay, I see how it is. I got you. How can I help you? You know, and then like answer it with, you know, down here where you can say brand, branding, web design, anything that you offer, logo. You know, any type of, um, design that you might offer that you want to kind of focus in on. And I'm, I'm just quickly putting this in here, but as simple as this, and then just adding your logo, you know, you can just even use a very, you know, witty hashtag -y logo, which might be kind of cool. Right. Like that when I showed you, or you could, you know, if that's too trendy, you can, you know, do something very simple, like Thomas design. Right. Um, Okay. So the, the so the logos there, it's just everything else that I gotta put there. Yep. So So the background colors work in everything else though, or does the I mean you have this theme that you have going on with your colors, so you know, make sure it's consistent whatever you decide to use. Okay. With what you've had you know, you don't unless you wanna go back and redo everything, which I'm probably sure you probably don't want to do. No. <laughs> but I'm just kind of trying to give you a little bit more of an idea of how you're, how you can try to realign what you're saying in your postcard to make kind of a little bit more sense. Gotcha. I think, I think you had an idea in your head. You just didn't know how to communicate it. Right. So it's the same thing with like my papers. It's like I, like my papers for my other class, I had all the right intentions and I had all the right ideas, but I was having somebody in uh, uh, Blackboard telling uh -huh. me that the direction I was going in was wrong and come to find out the direction I was going in wasn't wrong at all. It was just me getting off track a little bit. It's and hard to it, communicate what the needs are to somebody who's, yeah, because they don't know and you're trying to tell them what what you're supposed to do and it just gets lost in translation. Yeah. So, so you can, you can add your colors to this. So let's say you did that purple. I don't know what purple. It was off that unicorn purple. So it was part of my swatches. So. All right. Well, I'm just going to pick one just to show you real quick. No. And I'm really quick at this. I don't think, Oh my God. Yeah, I know. I've been I'm doing like, this for a long time. <laughs> oh, I know. I have. I you, even in your uh, when I made that center that center I I literally was. Uh, I'm surprised that I got the grade that I did on that because I was struggling with that. Like, I almost made all my points on that center book cover except for a few errors, and I didn't know how to fix them. And believe it or not, the methods I used. I actually made it transparent because I didn't know how to blend it into the background. So, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of transparent a little bit so you can see through the background. <laughs> I was like, I know I need to make this where I can see the background, but how do I not completely fade them out? So I kind of adjusted it to where I needed it. So Okay. Something like this, Thomas, is all you need. Just something very simple. Don't overthink it. You don't even need to do, and I know you spent a lot of time on that little unicorn design, and I I appreciate you. I mean, that's that that all 
is definitely worth doing because you're getting that experience. But I just wanted to show you what, what you can do very simply, but more effectively communicate how you, how you can present yourself a little bit more effectively. Okay. So having that unicorn on there really is not necessary, but it would be just a fun. Yeah. I think you can use it on other things. So I wouldn't, okay. you know, I wouldn't say get rid of it. I think you can okay. definitely do something with that. It's just, I'm not sure how. Okay. So do you just want this. me to come up with something, uh, if you're into design on the front and then, uh, I'm here to help or something. Yeah, very simple. And then see how I did your logo? Just a very simple word mark. Yeah. And I just used your first name just to very quickly do it. You don't have to yeah. just, you know. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So that's basically, okay, I was making it more complex because I was trying to be all fancy with it like you were in class. And I'm like, man, I want to, like, but no, nah, I can see that, you know, when the instructors are doing stuff fancy in class and they <laughs> it's like okay you know what the students are so yeah okay if it's but okay I think the only can... fancy part on mine was just the the grid structure i picked out and then just the visual examples and how i placed them in there everything yeah. else is pretty simple in terms of the type but uh but yeah i mean i think that's one of the things you do when you're a student and i've been there i over design and i overthink and i overdo and then i look back and i'm like why did i do that and it's just right. part of the learning experience so Okay, well, yeah, I can easily have something that simple and have it turned in tonight. Is that still opened or now? What's that? Week two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I do, um, and I know you're recording, um, and I was wanting to discuss my grades, but that's like on a personal level, so I can wait until we're done going over this and recording to discuss that because... There are some things I need to talk to you about in the grade book. Okay. Sounds and then good. and then we can wrap up. All right. Do you since have any other Yeah, since I definitely know what week two is, so. Okay. So we're good to go. We don't have any other questions? Or... No, ma'am. Awesome. If I um, do, I know how to email you and be like, hey, do you have like five minutes or something to. Yeah, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop this. Just pause this here and then you can. Yeah, Whatever. Uh, because it was like, if you had like, if I stuck, hey, do you have five minutes of office time because I'm stuck or something, or I can go to the Student Success Center if I'm stuck on anything too, so, um, if I show, oh, yeah, I forgot to show you, but in my other class, I'm like feeling that miserably, so. Okay, I'm recording you right now, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, I see that. But no, in my other class, I'm feeling that miserably because that was that was literally three papers that I failed at, and I'm making like a forty, if not below. Mm. Yeah. Well, you gotta like. It's like one of those things you just have to create balance and try to get it all like work a little harder for you know get that up if you can. It's like one of those hard balance issues you know exactly and when you got life going at you like you do and you're battling depression like i do it's kind of hard yeah it's all it's life is tough you know it's like but we're human and you know we have to yeah i just wish that you know being 15 or you know 11 or you know mm -hmm. that people would have taught me what the real world real world was like instead of me being 15 and realizing okay you know what to survive you kind of have to be heartless and become something you're not and you kind of have to grow up real quick at 15 because like my childhood was ripped for me so I had to grow up but during the stuff that I was going through I you know developed wrong diagnosis by doctors because they think that I am diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and everything under the sun. And they're trying, they tried to put me on medication for it and nothing has worked. It has literally the side effects were suicidal and homicidal tendencies. And I, now it's just like, okay, when I'm depressed, it's like, I don't want to do my schoolwork. I don't want to, you know, try to take care of my five-year-old son. I don't, 
I just like yeah, it goes sleep, and that's not good. And it, it's cost me relationships and everything else because I I tried to deal with it, and the way I deal with it, some people don't agree with. And a lot of it is the fact that I'm 27 and people look at it like I have the child mentality of how I deal with it. So Yeah, well, everybody has their own way of dealing with things. And I know I have depression in my family, so I understand, like, you know. Well, like I told you, I think last week, I've grown to get to know you. Like, as, like, we, like, meet, like, on a regular basis, talk got to know you because I've had you for so many classes. So I can like, I feel like I can like talk to you as a friend or anything like that. And I know I told you that I think like a week ago. Yeah. And that's good. I'm glad you can uh, feel comfortable and, and stuff like that. I know. And I understand it's life is hard and we just have to inspire each other and try to, you know, help each other. So, you know, and that's what I'm here for. You know, I had a lot of good, really amazing instructors throughout my <laughs> schooling, and it really makes a big difference. Right, and some of the and some of the learning coaches in uh in Blackboard understand that too as well. So yeah, definitely, everybody's different. Everybody has a different situation. So well, I couldn't. I forgot to wish Brittany this, but I hope fully I get to see her in another class. But I got to say it in my last class. But I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's, and I hope you stay safe. Oh, you too, Thomas. It's great to see you again and have you here in class. Now, I do want to ask that question because I know this is the last discussion for this class. Right. Is there a way? I know my initial post is different than any, and I know I have to comment on two different people. Mm -hmm. But is there any way as to for the whole entire class as a to wish everybody like a safe Christmas or whatever is there is it okay if I did that or no? I mean, the discussion of uh, uh, board. I don't think it's a bad thing. Just say a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I don't think I would. I don't think anybody would be okay. Would say anything? No, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, I still say right. Merry Christmas to people outside. And <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I can't believe it's like two weeks away. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. I can't yeah. believe this year's almost over with. I know. It's like summer was like one minute long. <laughs> well, for me, it's always summer down here. So oh. I can it's literally nice. walk around. I can walk around in a short and t-shirt all year long down here in Texas. Yeah, I used to live in Florida for seven years, so I know exactly what you're saying. Now I'm here in Florida, Pittsburgh, Florida. Pennsylvania. So I was in Tampa. Oh, you're not too. You weren't too far from Miami. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was on the Gulf side, but. Well, isn't Tampa and Miami like an hour away from each other? Mm, I think it's probably more like a three-hour drive, too. Uh, I gotcha. It's like across the state. The state's yeah, long. I know long. one. I know they're like both right, right there. But yeah, right. Yeah. So, how bad is the? And I know this is totally off topic, but how bad is the snow up there so far? We just got some snow, but it's not too bad. Just a couple, like maybe a quarter of an inch today. Well, it was, it got so cold down here that a couple of times last year and already this year where we got flurries in Texas. So. Yeah, that's crazy. I heard that in <laughs> Northern Florida too. So. Well, yeah. And they're all freezing down there at like 60 degree weather. I remember being that, <laughs> I remember being that person where you get your blood thins out and you're freezing when it's 60 degrees. Yo, see, my blood, I've been living in Texas for seven years now, and I don't know if it's because I'm, like, an average body, so I don't want to say I'm overweight, but I'm not underweight, but I don't consider myself healthy either. I consider myself chubby, if you will, so I don't know if it's the extra pounds that I have or if I've literally been like this my whole entire life, but according to everybody in my family, I've always given off extra body heat even when I was skinny. So it really takes a lot for me to get cold. Like, 
I literally was living in Massachusetts. And before I bundled up, I was literally wearing winter boots and walking in snow up to my knees before I decided to bundle up. Oh, geez. So you must have a lot of, like, life energy in you. <laughs> I don't know. People don't, people don't know what to call it on my end because of the fact that I, I, because I didn't used to be like that, but I think like when I was turned 18, I don't know if you remember this or not, but the swine flu was really, really bad. And I ended up getting that on my 18th birthday and I had that all month of October, like sweats. And, and shortly after that, like my immune system skyrocketed because I can't even get the common cold now. Wow. Like, I literally tried, like, a couple of times with cold weather, literally getting out of the shower with the still partially dry, dripping, hair completely wet, stepping outside, trying to, uh, which is, you know, crazy on my end, trying to get sick, (laughs) and I can't. (laughs) Like, my immune system is, like, up there, and and. I, and shortly after that, was like, I I can't get sick, like, not even from the common cold. Well, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, some people look at it as a good thing, but then people look maybe at it like... It's I, your, maybe it's your body temperature killing off all the germs. I, they, I've tried to ask doctors because even though that I'm overweight, the only... Well, like I said, I don't consider myself overweight, but some people would say that. But even with me when I'm really, really stressed out is the only time I have high blood pressure. Mm. But doctors say that because I don't smoke, I don't do any of uh, drugs, if you will. I, they don't understand how I am the size that I am and not having uh, any problems being diabetic, not having any problems with high cholesterol, high blood pressure, nothing. And the doctors are, are, like, amazed by it. Well, I guess that's a good thing, right? I, I look at it like it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. I so. can't get sick, and I'm not going to the doctors all the time. Yeah, I look mm-hmm. at it as a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's when, it, when, it, when you do get sick, it's probably going to be a, a big one. You know, it's one of those things, but hopefully not. Exactly, because that's what my girlfriend uh, is concerned with. Like, if I do get sick, it since I haven't gotten sick in the last seven years, like literally, it's been it's been longer than that since I was eighteen. Mm-hmm. Since I haven't gotten sick since I was eighteen, everybody's concerned that once I get sick, it's going to be so bad that it's going to take everything out of me. Right. Well, hopefully that's not the case either, but. Exactly. Because I haven't you gotten can't sick. Mean. <laughs> exactly. That, but I haven't gotten sick since I was 18. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Hmm. And like I said, it was shortly after the swine flu. Especially when you have a five-year-old with you too, because they're like little walking germs. Exactly. <laughs> that's crazy. Like he can get, like everybody in this house can get the common cold. He can, my mom can, and my stepdad can. Everybody else can get it, but I can't. Wow. Well, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> Hopefully it's the other way around, right? So that's a I, 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 I feel like I, I literally the best way I can put that is I feel like Harry Potter. <laughs> the unbreakable. I, I, feel, I feel like it's a curse. But at the same time, there's a purpose for it. So, exactly. Oh. Just well, like with him at the end of Vault, he found out that he was the whole crooks that Voltmore never meant to make. And come to find out the prophecy one couldn't live without the other, and one had to kill the other so the one could survive. Which, you know, once you look, read the books and everything, Harry Potter was the master of death. So he's kind of immortal if you think about it. Yeah, crazy, huh? So a neat way to look at it. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, well, that's, I've like, I've looked at, I, I even like, because I've watched so many X-Men movies and 
sci uh, I don't know the term for them, but sci-fi movies, there you go, mm -hmm. that I even feel like somehow I'm... I know this is going to sound crazy, but I even feel like somehow I'm evolving, if you will. Like on the X-Men, how they talk about evolution and how people have this. And I'm just like, okay, so is my power not able to get sick or something? Like <laughs> immune to all diseases or something? That would be, that would be a great power to have, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Or the healing factor would be really nice, too. Mm -hmm. That is funny. Well, it was but, great chatting with you. And I hope you have a great Christmas and Happy New Year and enjoy your family and going forward. Good luck to you. Keep in touch. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. You know, let definitely. me know if you have any questions before class ends. And... I will. I definitely still have your email address from when I first emailed you the very first time. So I still have that. Great. Um, so, yeah. Well, we'll wrap it up and call it a day. Yes, ma'am. All right, Thomas. Thanks for uh, hanging in there, and good luck with everything. I'll be checking out your, your updates. Okay. Uh, I just hope I get to work with you later on, hopefully. Yeah. I love seeing, new, you know, familiar faces and names, so yeah. play catch up. Yeah. All right. You have a great night. You too. All right. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Okay.